Now to Rwanda, where a college is trying to break a cycle of violence and discrimination by empowering women through education. Special correspondent Fred de Sam Lazaro reports it's part of his series, Agents for Change. So what we are going to do, we are going to clean and refresh. During the work week, 30-year-old Nadia Kubwimana is a catering manager at the Marriott Hotel, one of the newer entries into a glitzy skyline of Rwanda's capital, Kigali. On weekends, she steps into a very different world, helping mentor 250 women in her hometown just outside Kigali. Together, they have started 42 different small businesses, ranging from vegetable markets to handmade baskets to a cooperative that sells coal for cooking stoves. These women meet in a tiny storage shed located in a less trafficked area on the outskirts of the city. They wish to grow their business. The problem they have is you see that where we are is far from road, the main road. Kubuimana is a recent graduate of the Akila Institute, a two-year college which trains women to be leaders in the world of business. From uh, Akila, I learned about leadership. I learned uh, to be confident. I learned how I can manage a small business. The school is part of an effort by Rwanda to leave behind its image of a violent country wrecked by genocide. Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, has been criticized for human rights violations and for stifling dissent. He recently won re-election by a lopsided 99% after changing the constitution to extend his reign. Still, the country has made considerable strides in reducing poverty. In the 23 years since the genocide, Rwanda has been a world leader in bringing down infant mortality, maternal mortality. Life expectancy has climbed from 48 to 58. But the statistic that makes this country unique in the world reflects the role of women in all of this. Half of this country's Supreme Court justices are female, and so are two-thirds of its members of parliament. In spite of the impressive statistics, many women have not participated in those gains. The Akila Institute, the first all-women's college in the country, wants to change that. It was founded seven years ago by Elizabeth Dearborn Hughes, a Vanderbilt University graduate who had come to volunteer in Rwanda in 2008 and found that only 7% of women entered college and nearly 85% of women made less than $2 a day if they found work at all. At Aquila, the emphasis is on preparing women for well-paying jobs and financial independence. Aline Kabanda is the school's director. The Aquila founders went to the private sector and asked, where, where do you see the country's um, um, uh, fastest growing sectors of the economy? What are the skills gap? What do you need? And really make sure that one choice of our programs, as well as the curriculum itself, really mirrors the expectations of the private sector. When you do something wrong to a customer, you're ruining the company's image. The school focuses on three areas of study, entrepreneurship, the hospitality industry, and information technology. It recruits half its students from rural areas, the other half from Kigali, and offers generous financial aid to attract and encourage students who otherwise would have no chance of receiving a college education. You all know when they hire us, they are expecting a lot from us. But before teaching any specific skills for a career path, the school works to develop the women's self-confidence, says instructor Jackie Semakula. But first we build in them the spirit of believing in themselves, taking them through like growth mindset class, where their ability to excel and grow is not fixed. So they start believing, oh, I can do this. And if they try it again today, try it again tomorrow, you're building self-belief and hence, no limit. For many of the young students, Aquila is the first place they've heard about gender equality. Sandrine Sangues now studies IT but back in high school, she says, girls were not encouraged to develop computer skills. We were supposed to sit like three children on one computer, and at that time, they, they allow a boy to, start, to stand like in front of the keyboard so that like he can be the one who dealing with the keyboard. They don't see the potential that we have as girls. Alan Ingabire, who studies hospitality management, realizes that many young women don't see their potential either. 
some girls who did not come to Akila, they still feel like they can't do that. Here at Akila, we've been given this opportunity to get exposed to leaders, to learn leadership. So it is our time to go and tell our young sisters, tell our friends that you can do this even though your, your, your friend is telling you that you can't. We're looking at the next generation of female leaders and then we're telling them you have a role to play. You know, as a leader of yourself, as a leader of your family, as a leader of your community, and that will trickle down to the whole country. Jackie Mutama is a good example of the shift that is starting to take place in Rwanda. In 2010, she was a 35-year-old housewife with two small children, but she was restless. I was not interested to stay home as housewife. She became part of the first class of students at Akila, graduating in 2012, and then pursued a dream of owning a farm. Mutama bought 17 acres of land outside Kigali and now manages four full-time and several seasonal workers, growing nuts, bananas, sorghum, and yucca. And she's looking to expand her business. She knows that her success will help provide jobs for others in the community. And she's also become a role model for her two daughters, who say they dream of going to Harvard and Oxford when they grow up. Jackie Mutama gives much of the credit to Akila. I think Akila makes you a new creature. Makes you a new, into a new creature? Yeah. How to manage things, how to come, to become as a leader. The Akila Institute is also hoping to expand in the coming years, building colleges in seven other African countries. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Fred de San Lazaro in Kigali, Rwanda. Fred's reporting is part of the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.